This is a Thorium Energy Alliance Technology Talk from the inaugural Future of Energy Conference, October 2009. To find out more about Thorium Energy, please visit thoriumenergyalliance.com. This talk is from Robert Morse, whose topic is liquid fuel thorium reactors without equations. Power does make a difference. It makes a tremendous difference. The hut and the open fire are one of the diddliest environments on Earth for anyone that tells us that back to nature is a good place to go. There are over 70 countries with an average per capita income below $10 per day. They don't want an iPod. They want clean water. They want to be able to pump away their sewage. They want their children to stop dying so early and so often. This is not an entirely third world problem. Parts of California where we've refused to allow people to pump water or desalinate water, they have 40% unemployment. These sorts of problems are not far away. The next question is what level of risk are we willing to tolerate with any lifter development? Perfection is a standard that many will ask for. A design that we want to propose to use must be self-regulating when it is on. It can't balance on a knife edge. It must be passively safe when it is off, and it must be inherently safe in case of an accident. Some of you may recognize this from Charles' earlier writings. He's convinced me. How big of a problem do we have? You and I, in our Western societies, I include Europe, will, concern, will consume energy, most of it from coal, of about a 10 meter diameter ball. That's a lot of material per life. It's also a lot of waste. The sand, the uranites, the thoria, trace metals in that same ball of coal would produce a 37 millimeter diameter ball of thorium. That too is enough to power a human life, cradle to grave, in a Western society. But we have two separate standards for the, uh, the power we use. We have our grandfather's power where we ignore it. We have proposed future energy sources, which we hold to near perfect standards. And they can almost not be met, depending on who defines the rules. On the left side, it shows, shows the relative cross sections for fast fusion reactions. Fast speeds, what's that? When neutrons come out of a, of a fission event, they're at a fair fraction of the speed of light. I mean, we're talking about their velocities in terms of percentages of their rest masses. Thorium absorption is quite low. If we slow these neutrons down through collisions, the probability of cross-section increases. To give you some scale, it increases roughly by factors of 200 to 220. Why does that matter? Because of some of the earlier requirements we talked about. There's another issue. This is, hard, this is hard to understand. Why, if I slow something down, does it become more uh, effective? I get more reactions per, per collision. You and I are used to throwing harder and seeing uh, greater effect. And in some sense, that's true in very fast, high-spectrum reactors, some uh, fusion-fission hybrids. You can get more neutrons out. But again, the probability of interaction per collision per unit length decreases. For the chemical engineers in the house, I have a different slide that sort of makes this a little more obvious, maybe even for some congressional representatives. We want to achieve capture, not just the collision. And we need time for internuclear exchange for a neutron to actually interact with the, uh, with the nucleus. We're talking about liquid coolants and liquid fuels. The core of this device is not an array of fuel pins. It's an array of moderator. What it does is use this factor of 200 in cross-section to turn on and off a nuclear reaction as the fuel approaches a, a moderator. It could be carbon. It could be other fuels. There are other solutions that people propose that are non-moderated. That's fine. I'm going to stick with very simple solutions because of the requirements that I presented initially as we had a systems engineering discussion that says there are requirements should and will drive the design. Some of the uranium decays spontaneously. 
Many of the neutrons are lost as the fuel is pumped around. But as it approaches the core, the fuel is exposed to slower neutrons. It then begins, the reactivity increases, uh, temperature rises, fuel expands, and then a beautiful thing with very temperature stable reactors is the reactivity stops. It's a power plant with a built-in thermostat. We can come up with other designs that don't have it. I argue this is an important trade that you might want to retain through all your design studies. An improved reactor, of course, takes this into account, has a, a broader temperature over which it uh, operates. Reactivity is cons uh, consistent along the length of the core. Temperature rises. But this is an important property of the reactor, and it has an important loop, uh, important uh, property. If you stop taking power out of the reactor, if you stop pumping fuel through it, its output drops automatically. You throw hot fuel at this device and it shuts down. Another important no thing you'll notice immediately, there are no control rods visible. If you shut this reactor down, because it's had a, fuel, uh, a fluid fuel, it can be continuously reprocessed. Many of the fission products that produce you know, an incredible amount of decay heat in large reactors, enough decay heat to melt the fuel, in fact, melt their way right through the core of the, uh, through a containment vessel, through a, partially through a containment building. Decay heat that require in-depth cooling systems, three, four layers deep, that needn't be present in these designs. You could literally shut it down and walk away. An efficient design. Again, we only have a few requirements to meet, little or, or no radioactive waste. The pure lifter uh, thorium breeder has almost no non-fissile uh, non material, no, no fertile material in the core. We've had other people that have said, look, it doesn't matter what you have in the fuel salt. It only matters on what you remove. Both are valid points. Those are design trades we have to discuss. But we know we want little or no bomb-making materials. We want low cost per power delivered, a small physical size for more than one reason, um, and a wide choice of building sites. Again, size matters. There's your golf ball. That's the, you, that's the thorium required to power your entire lifetime. Similar for your children. They won't use that much more than you do. Let's put things in perspective. That grain of rice is your waste stream. Is that too much? We have some people that would say it is. Any is too much. That waste stream is inherent in that pile of coal. We want to be thermally efficient. That gives us more energy out for dollars in. That's, the, that's ultimately the, the benefit of efficiency, not that we don't reject heat. One uh, fascinating thing, because this is a new technology, we can use the non-standard uh, Brayton cycles. That's awesome. We can air cool. You can put it on a mountaintop. You can put it in a cave. Colonel, you can put it back in a cave should you need to, um, which are some non-standard siting options. We don't need to get pinned by this normal sort of uh, environmental regulations where we're all fighting for waterfront property. Perhaps the best reason is because we really are not alone in the world. It's not perfect, but it is fantastically better than what we have. Again, I want to remind you that the person, the person that defines the rules of the competition will choose the winners. And this is where we must argue. We must, we must clearly show that the designs we provide are better than the status quo and not get pinned against perfection. I want to industrialize the world. People live longer. I, I have this real attraction to people. It's, this is not a, an academic discussion. Um, I want them to be able to live long lifetimes. I want most of the rest of the world to be able to industrialize, even if their countries weren't blessed with vast supplies of oil. Right now, we import smart people all over the world. They're attracted to the United States and Europe and Canada, not just because of our civilization. We offer them a modern life, let alone a job. That alone should be reason to develop this reactor. That's a tremendous opportunity. I think the people in this room are, are uh, more than capable of facing that opportunity and, and meeting it. I'd like to take any questions you might have. That's the conclusion of my talk.